Hello, welcome to Anson Griffin's occasional series in YouTube tutorials. Today we'll be looking at uh, statistics and we're looking at Likert scale and the, for the Wilcoxian match pair. So this would be the equivalent uh, for, to the pair to t test, except it's non parametric. For those of you that are not too sure what a pair to t test is, you know you would have seen those ads from leading manufacturer A and leading manufacturer B of washing powder and you took 10 jumpers and you cut them in half and you washed one in you know, brand A and you wa washed the other in brand B and you got the knobbliness of the two jumpers after or of the 10 jumpers after the the experiment. So the idea is to remove variability between the groups. Or another example if you were trying to test out the effectiveness of mosquito repellent you would put 20 volunteers into a, a swampy area and you would expose one arm to a mosquito repellent A and another arm to mosquito repellent B and you wait until the first mosquito bite. Okay, this is done fairly regularly in the southern USA. So that idea just of trying to remove variability would in in group. So and for again as I mentioned on another one, why would you, what's a non parametric? When you don't know that the uh, the distributions are normal or the data is not continuous, so this would be in a Likert scale. You have one, two, three, four, five. So, Dr. Rensis Likert, okay, 1932, and just a bit of history there. Typical uh, scale for a f five level Likert form. Usually, one is the most negative and five is the most positive. So I made up this question here and we had um, the OPAC open public access uh, for a library system and again one is strongly disagree and five is strongly agree. And there was 25 responses and there was no missing data. And there's the data there. Okay. <coughs> so it doesn't matter. It's just... So there's the Wilcoxian rank sum test and its uh, independent uh, distributions. So in other words, that the outcome uh, of answer A does not influence the outcome of answer B. So to go back to the mosquito example, that uh, the fact that uh, you, you, the f you're you waiting to see which, which arm is bitten first, that has no bearing on the other one. Okay. And the assumptions the populations are continuous and independent random. Okay. And uh, just also that you can either look up the Wilcoxian rank sum test or you can look up uh, the normal distribution if the sample sizes are greater than or equal to 10. There's the procedure now, since we're just going to do the uh, the online calculator, we're not going to bother with the procedure here, but if you want to do it, that's just how we do it there. Uh, there's the link, sock size statistics, and okay, so that's the online calculator we're going to use, and we're going to look at the value. So just have a, let's have a go at this. There's my data. There's for search by author. I have the website open, just cut paste. There's the second question. Just cut paste. Might zoom a little bit here. Okay, so sock size statistics just up the top there so just slow down here a little bit uh, we're going to go at a five percent significance level and we're going to do a two-tailed test so the hypothesis is mentioned this before that there is no difference in the median value of treatment one and there is no difference in the median value of treatment two and the alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference and we're not saying whether it's a is greater than b or a is less than b which are saying it's either less than or greater than so that would be the two-tailed test and the significance level you have to have some sort of rejection criteria and one percent would be a quite weak 
uh, test of 5% would be fairly strong and as I mentioned in one of my other uh, YouTube tutorials 5% is by far by far the most common uh, implementation so we hit calculate so it did the maths for us there the sign the absolute value of the R the sign of R but I'm just not too worried here so we have some results here I also have it in the PowerPoint slide it calculates the W value that's the Wilcoxian um, rank sum and it also calculates the Z value so the Z value here minus 0 0.5491 so let's go back to my slides minus 0 0.5491 and um, so I've got this rejection region here this is using the normal distribution because the sample size is greater than or equal to 10 uh, minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 so if you get a z value that's in the blue here on the left or in the blue here on the right you reject the null hypothesis if your z score is between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 you have no reason to reject the null hypothesis our z value is minus 0.5491 so that's roughly where the mouse is there so we are well inside the acceptance region so we have no reason to reject the null hypothesis that's using the Z value score the W value just to go back to here there's the W values of 32 the critical value of W is 13 and if you I didn't look up the tables but the tables are on facultyweb.berry.edu there's tons of them out there so if we're saying if for us if our W score is less than uh, 13 less than or equal to 13 we reject an all hypothesis our W value is 32 so 32 is not less than 13 so we're in the acceptance region so we have no reason to reject the null hypothesis at a 5% level of significance. Okay, so thanks very much. Thanks for listening.